Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss a very specific example of a galvanic cell. And so just to recall, we know that electrochemical cell is the global term, okay, and then un in, underneath that you have a galvanic cell which is a spontaneous process of electron transfer, okay, remember, this happens when the electrons flow from an anode to a cathode and the difference in the potential energy of each system is what is able to allow for that electron transfer, or make, what makes it a spontaneous process, okay, galvanic. So now in this video we're going to focus specifically specifically on the NICAD battery. So Ni meaning nickel, CAD meaning cadmium. And so this is kind of an antiquated battery, but it worked really, really well, and so we definitely want to study it. So the NICAD battery is very unique because what it does is it uses what's called an electrolyte paste. And it uses this paste instead of a salt bridge. So we use an electrolyte paste instead of a salt bridge. But here's the thing, it basically does the exact same thing that a salt bridge does. So this paste allows for the flow of charge. Okay, so it basically is in between the anode and the cathode and it allows for charge to flow from one to the other. So now, that means that this battery is rechargeable which is really awesome, which basically means in order for this to happen is that you can apply a voltage to reverse the flow of electrons. Okay, so what that means, in a standard galvanic cell, what happens is the electrons are going from the anode to the cathode every single time, from anode to cathode. This is the spontaneous process, and it has to do with the difference in the energy levels. Now, for a rechargeable battery, what that means is we can apply energy to this low-level system down here to force those electrons to go from low to high energy, so they go low to high. And so this is not a spontaneous process. This does not occur naturally on its own in isolation. But if you apply energy to the low-level system, it can automatically let that electron jump back up until all the electrons are all the way back here on the reactant side, and then the battery can then function. So when you're recharging your battery, you're basically allowing for this electrochemical cell to go or to operate in the reverse direction. So now, in order for this to happen, we have a couple main rules. The first one is that you need to have both reactants and products must be a sal solid. I almost said a salad there. That would be good too, but must be a solid, okay? This is a safety reason. We do not want something like liquid cadmium just floating around up there for a non-chemist or non-scientist to somehow get that battery juice on their arm and it would burn and then basically be toxic, so it would be really, really bad. So we need to make sure just for safety of all human beings that could possibly be using this battery, we want to make sure that our reactants and products are in the solid state, okay? The second thing is that we need to realize that these rechargeable batteries will eventually die. It's not a foolproof proof process. Will eventually die. Even though batteries are 90% efficient, usually, okay, globally, 90% efficient, compare that to 30% efficient from a coal power plant, but they're 90% efficient. So what that means is that they're able to go over and over and over and over and over again. But eventually they get to a spot where they do die because they're creating too many byproducts or which we would kind of refer to as um, impurities. So let's look at a picture of this to try to help because it's, it's just different, so just kind of keep that in your mind. It looks very different from the original picture that we saw. But basically what we see is that we have an anode here. Your anode is going to be your cadmium, so that's represented by that bluish color. Your cathode is going to be your nickel component, and so that's represented by your red color. And so what you see is you have very, very thin, thin layers of electrodes that are layered on top of each other, one on top of each other, but they're separated. You have anode then you have your electrolyte paste, which in this example is potassium hydroxide, which is your separator, and then you have your cathode. So three things just re reproducing or uh, repetitive over and over and over again. So you've got your anode, your paste, your cathode, anode, paste, cathode, anode, paste, cathode, over and over and over again which allows for maximum surface area and a beautiful, beautiful transfer of electrons. So what I want to do now is write out the overall reaction of this NICAD battery, and I want you to identify a couple things for me. So let's write out the overall chemical equation first. So we have cadmium solid plus 2NiO, and then there's two hydroxyl groups here, and that is in the solid state. Oh, that's not true. 
there. Sorry, one hydroxyl group there. That's in a solid state, plus two waters. And now these are liquids. Obviously, we know that about water. So I'm going to use a double-headed arrow here to indicate that we can go forward and backwards, which is absolutely necessary in order to have um, a rechargeable battery. And then we also are going to create cadmium hydroxide as well and that's also in your solid state. So I have two questions here that I need you to be able to interpret or analyze based on looking on this chemical equation. First thing, which reagent is oxidized? And I'm looking for a reagent or a starting reagent or a starting material, okay? Second question, which reagent, or I could say reactant if that helps as well, which reactant is reduced? Okay, two questions, go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, and it is a lot simpler than I made it seem. Here's the thing. You could go through something, an incredibly difficult, challenging process, and go through here and assign oxidation state and say, and say, okay, my cadmium is zero here. I know I can go to my reactant side. My OH group is minus one. There's two of them, so it's minus two overall. So my cadmium here has to be plus two. It goes from zero to plus two. That's a really, really complicated process. You could do that and determine which one's oxidized and which reagent is reduced, or you can look at the information that I just provided you. All right? I told you that your cathode is N-I-O-O-H, right? I told you that. So if you know that your cathode is this specific reagent, you know that it has to have a reduction reagent, which means it is definitely reduced. So if I ask you which reagent is reduced, all you have to do is determine which one is at that cathode, okay? Same thing, which reagent is oxidized? We can see in this picture right here that our anode is uh, cadmium. The only thing, the only reagent that could possibly oxidize in this specific cell has to be cadmium because it's at the anode, okay? Please, don't get tripped up. Electron transfer and electrochemistry can be incredibly difficult. I can't even explain how challenging and how deep you can get into this, but make sure you remember these basic facts, okay? Cathode, reduced, anode, oxidized. That's it, take care of yourself, drink water.